You've probably been in a situation where, for instance, you've seen a vector 2D, which is a struct that Unreal comes with. And if you try to just add that to another vector 2D, these little math nodes that you see for floats, for other types of vectors, are able to take in these structures. But if you make your own structure, you can't just randomly throw them into these math nodes and expect Unreal to be able to know how to handle them. With a little bit of fairly simple C++ code, you can actually make these math nodes recognize your custom structs. So let's take a look at that. The way that we're going to be starting with this is making a new C++ class. So I come up here into Tools, New C++ class, and we're going to be making a Blueprint function library for this. And we'll call this uh, struct converters, struct convert something like that. In this header file, I'm going to be declaring my structure. Of course, it's a bit of a weird place to declare your structure right here in your function library, but this is just for demonstrational purposes. So we'll make a uStruct and we'll make sure that that's a blueprint type so we can actually use it within blueprint. Makes sense, right? And we'll indeed call this struct example struct. Give that the normal like generated body, everything like that, the end, semicolon, everything that you're used to. Now, what we're going to be putting in here, I'm just going to be putting in a float for value A and then a integer for value B. That's actually a pretty good way to do this. Now, when I want to add these together, I want to add float to float and int to int. I need to explicitly tell my code how to do that. Now, if you just want to use this in C++, of course, you can just overwrite the operator. Uh, simply by making a function that says example struct operator, say we want to overwrite the plus, and then we take in a example struct, which we'll call other. You can make a couple of these things const, you probably should, but it's not the point, I'm just showing everything here. And that then just will return a new example struct of a value a plus other a and value b plus other b. And now in C++, we can easily just add these two things together and that takes care of that. But that doesn't really work in Blueprint already. So for Blueprint, we need to make a separate other function to also deal with this. And that's why we're inside of a function library here, because we're going to want to define it in there. We declare this as a u function, no surprise there. Uh, I'll make this Blueprint pure and we'll give this some meta stuff. So we do meta equals some extra fun stuff. Let's say compact node title equals just plus because we're going to be adding things together. You can give it a category and all that type of stuff, but for now that doesn't really matter that much. So then we make a static function and that's going to be returning our example struct. And this needs to have a fairly specific name. It's going to be add underscore and then the type of struct and the other type of struct. So in this case, that would be example struct, example struct. This also means that you can make functions to add one type of struct with another type of struct and output whatever, really. We're going to take in a const example struct A reference and a const example struct B reference here. And because this allows you to in theory, put in two different types of structs that you're going to be adding together. What we want to do is within this meta section. So before we even like leave these two parentheses, add in a comma and then add in blueprint autocast as it was suggesting before, but kind of ignored. I'm not even 100% sure if that's needed if you're adding two of the same struct together, but it's just good habit to get into. But I just added in there anyway, because frankly, otherwise I forget when it matters. So it might actually matter here. I don't know. I've never tried not doing it. This is a declaration. Of course, we then do need to give this an implementation. And here we just do the same thing that we did before. So we return our example structs. And that's going to be our input A, value A, plus B, value A. And then input A, value B, plus B. This is not very well written. Uh, you probably want to call this input 1 and input 2 or something like that, just for clarity's sake. It's just a little bit more clear. So replace these A's with input one and these B's with input two. Just makes it a little bit more readable. Now, in the same way, we can, instead of saying that we want to add them, we want to say multiply them, subtract them, divide them. We can even, instead of returning a 
example struct here. What we can do is we can make one that returns a bool. So let's say we return a bool here, and then we can even get stuff like less than or greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, all that type of stuff. So let's implement this as well. And I like this idea. We just return if value A on the first one is less than and value B on the first one is less than. Combination of that is just going to be re the return of comparing two of this type of struct. And then the compact note title here, let's make sure that we just give that the proper little name. Now that we have that set up, let me just rebuild the project real quick. And we'll see that these structs can now be added together and again be compared with the less than node. So first and foremost, let's make our example struct variable in here. And if we pull that in here, you can see that I can hook this up to the math node in both of those bins. You'll also note that if I try to subtract, it's not going to allow me to do that because I didn't make a subtraction function. The same way, I can actually check if this is less than, and it takes that in, no problem. If I want to check if this is greater than, I didn't make an implementation for that, so it doesn't allow me to do that. So, just to show that this works, let's add in an event tick real quick with a print string. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a second one of these, uh, compile. Oh, neither. I didn't expose the actual values to Blueprint, so that's kind of worthless to me at the moment. Obviously, you would want both of these to be U properties with edit anywhere and Blueprint rewrite. Just super quick do that. Now, with that done, I can actually give these default values. So let's say value A here is 3.4 and value B here is 5. And then for the other one, we're going to do 6.7 and value B will be 1. So if we add these two together and then we break them again, because I don't have a conversion for this to string, so I can't directly print it, uh, but I can just make a append string here and we can say value A and then value B. And it's going to be printing that out every single frame now. And it 10.1 and 6. So our math operation works within Blueprint just like that. And again, our less than function also works. If you want the rest of our math to also work within Blueprint, we need to be adding a whole bunch of functions here, which you can do. Everything is relatively straightforward. The only thing to keep in mind is if you want to do a comparing, you actually want to be calling that something along the lines of equal, equal instead. You might think just one equal does the thing, but the thing is, if you're comparing things in programming, you use two equal signs, so it also expects you to declare this as it being two equal signs. It's a little bit weird in a way to write it out, but that's just kind of what you do. So you just return a dot value a is b dot value a and b dot value blah 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 blah. You'll get the point. But now that we've done that, you can see I can just equal equal these as well, and it actually still has the wrong uh, note name, which is a little bit funny. But if I hover over it, you can see it is actually an equal equal operation instead. If I just put a literal float into it, it should also change it to actually reflect the proper name. But that's just literally a labeling issue. It will do the equal equal operation. So that's the only one that's uh, maybe a little counterintuitive, but everything else, it would just be named the way that you would expect it to be named. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. My cave student tier supporters, Oiku, Earl, Monserville, Erno, and my cave digger tier supporters, Mauricio Ferrias.